Welcome back to Inside Sources. My guest today is what we call a new emerging voice in the Nigerian uh, national discourse. Is a professor from uh, Boston University, United States, Walter G. Milda, professor of social ethics. His teaching and research focus are in the areas of history, philosophy, uh, ethics, and economics. He was a former investment banker in Lagos and also in Wall Street. An author of over 25 books, I'd like to welcome two inside sources, Professor Nimi Wariboko, Walter G. Muida Professor of Social Ethics at the Boston University. Prof, you welcome to Inside Sources. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, um, uh, Akande, for um, bringing me on. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, the conversation on the future of Nigeria normally starts like this, and we're just going to get to it, uh, Prof. If you look at where the country is today, where we are today, would you say that our country, Nigeria, we are on course uh, to that great, greater Nigeria that all of us dream about, as things stand today? Your view, Prof? Um, I don't think we are on course. Actually, we are still heading the wrong way. So until we make a course correction <clears throat> and come back, we are not uh, on course yet. We are, it's like, like somebody going from Lagos to um, to Sokoto, and then you decide to go to Podakot uh, first, and you're even going down to 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 the Atlantic. So that is that is the kind of movement we have. We we have not yet um, um, started the journey to our greatness. Wow. So so what do you think has to happen for us to uh, change course? You know what. You know, maybe one or two critical elements that is required, or whichever way you want to take it forward, uh, Prof. I'd like to know. So, what, in your view, has to happen? In, in, in my view, there are about eight things that we need to um, urgently do or to reorient our, ourselves. But um, you said um, one or, or, or two or three. I'll, I'll just give you that. Please go First ahead. is that our philosophy of governance of existence has to change first in the sense that there has to be a commitment that government or society is to enable every Nigerian to become the best that he or she can be. Uh, that is what is called human flourishing. How do we create the institutions, the environment, the capabilities that will enable every Nigerian to become the best that he or she can be? That is, is, is one, if that commitment uh, is, is there. And then next, we have to invest heavily on human capital development. How do we ensure that, that the Nigerian is well trained to live into the promises of the 21st century and into the promises of the greatness of, of Nigeria? And we need to rearrange um, um, our investment process to say, are we creating the physical infrastructure that will enable us to develop uh, endogenously. That is, every local area in Nigeria should be drawing resources from itself to develop. But these are things that we are not doing. Of course, I've not even talked about leadership issue. How do we get the leaders, the right kind of leaders, to, to take this country forward? Well, so so that, 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 that's actually where I was going uh, to say that. Now, in, in your view, uh, since... Uh, you said that you don't think that we are even going in the right direction, that we are actually going in the wrong direction. How much of the responsibility for that will, 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 will have to go to the political elite and how much of that responsibility, in your view, if you think so, has to go to other sec uh, uh, sectors of the society, uh, the, 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 other leaders and, and the followers? How, how, how do you... Uh, uh, ascribe the responsibility. Because in my view, I think it is important, uh, if, if, if that is the situation, it's important to know how we got in the heading in the wrong direction. So, so let's, let's, let's just take a little while to look at that. Who do you hold responsible for what? 
Prof. Yes, the um, the bulk of the responsibility for our political um, for our failure lies with the political elite, the governance structure, because we've we've been unlucky since independence to have leaders who focus on their own pockets, that who focus on capturing the state and using the state to extract resources from from Nigeria. So so the state power has become the means of production. And in that process, every other form of uh, uh, economic activity is is al almost um, inhibited. So as long as we have leaders who use the state as as, as, as their means of production, rather than creating um, a, a proper functioning capitalist economy or market economy that would unleash the resources of Nigeria. So our problem the, the major obstacle to our economic development is actually politics. Politics is the number one obstacle to our economic development. So in that sense, leadership or um, the lack of appropriate leadership is the major cause of our, of, of our ongoing underdevelopment, suffering, and, and um, lack of focus. Hmm. Interesting point, uh, Prof. Now, I, I know uh, that... Um you know, it, it, this is the Fourth Republic, as, it, as, uh, as we say, uh, since 1999 up until now, uh, we've had quite a number of presidents, uh, from President uh, uh, Olushe Gombasanjo uh, to Imaru Musayara Dwa uh, to Dr. Uh, Goodluck Jonathan and uh, 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 President, uh, former President Muhammad Buhari. Now, I, I, I know that, you know, you yourself have been involved at some level in terms of political planning. And that's why I wanted to deepen uh, this, uh, this issue of how politics is responsible. What has to change, you know, and I, like I said, you know, maybe you want to tell us some of your own involvement, you know, in, in, in terms of political operations. But what has to change? What has to change in our politics? What has to change? Is it the structure or is it the people and their mentality? Or is it just all of these factors? Prof. Well, um, one of the things that I, I um, have to change is the structure also. We, we, we tell ourselves we're operating a, fed, a federal system, but the system is not actually federal. It's, it's, it's more of a unitary um, uh, system. So first, we have to rethink the idea of a federal system. How do we devolve power to the lower levels, to, to the state level, to the local government, and give them some some independence, let them um, control their own destiny, let them control their own fate, and let them be focused on their own developmental pros uh, prospects. We, we really need to think about the federal system, the way like it's done in the in, in United States where I live, every state um, is responsible for uh, uh, for its development, and every local government, uh, what they call the county, and, and then they have their own police, they have their own uh, resources. They set up their own universities, and they do all all that to to promote their own economic development. So we need to rethink the structure of the of, of the federal system in Nigeria. We are still too centralized at the federal level, and that means that you attract all sorts of people to go there. is is the best place to go and extract the much uh, as much resources as you can. So we need to address the the, the how we federate together. That is one. In terms of the politics, the is the people that get into 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 politics because you need an enormous amount of resources to uh, to be uh, in, in, in politics. I have been involved in in advising pres, uh, presidential candidates, and I know that even with good intention, you need billions and billions of of naira to contest an election. Where will that money come? Right. So somebody like Obama. Wouldn't have made any headway uh, uh, in Nigeria. Somebody had problem even paying off his student loan. We could we also sleep in a car to to give an address. But the people are there to donate to him in his campaign. They donated over a billion. So it is also the, the role of money and the unwillingness of the Niger the average Nigerian to support the politicians they want with the kind of money or resources of of volunteering to uh, 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 to work. But then, do you blame the the, the the people themselves? Because even if they, they gave their blood to a politician, 
he or she is going to reach there and, and forget them. So we're in a kind of a vicious cycle about because the people need to pursue and elect somebody that will serve their own in, interest. Because if we all come together, we can overcome that monetary uh, uh, yeah, issue and elect the, the right people uh, in, yeah, in place. But then the people themselves, from my own uh, experience, have advised a, a, a presidential election, have advised a gubernatorial uh, in, in election in different years. And, and the problem seems to be, if you don't have money, you cannot just, even with your good vision, you cannot just survive the political system. Eight years after, my view, you know, my view is that, and I've made this point publicly already, but I wanted to get your own take on it. My view is that we have not actually delivered, you know, or, or, or the leaders, our, our, our leaders, you know, have not delivered on that promise of change, uh, which was a big deal in this country in 2015. Uh, what's your assessment eight years after, based on your own experience? Well, um, just to um, clarify the issue, for those eight years, I never stepped foot into um, yeah, Asu Rock. So be, before somebody says... Uh, Unlike me. <laughs> <laughs> I never stepped, rock, uh, stepped foot into Asu Rock. I never met um, Buhari um, after the campaign, even though we, we had worked closely. Then I just went back to my uh, uh, yeah, yeah, academics. And, and observing the situation from where I am, 6,000 miles away and occasionally visit, I don't think um, President Mohamed Buhari delivered on a, on his promise. As, as a matter of fact, um, it was a disappointment to some of us who had left everything to to come and walk. Like somebody like me, it was my sabbatical year that I took off to walk, hoping that there would be a better Nigeria. But what happened that the change never came, the 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 level of corruption as we are reading in the newspapers now um, never really abated, and 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 Nigerians are are suffering more. Sometimes I see them here, and I said, "What must be going on in in President Buhari's mind mm. that when he's reading about all these things, even if um, he claims or we claim that he didn't know any of these things, and that could be uh, uh, rightly so, but now that he's hearing the stories." about his government, how does he feel? Because I remember in June 2014, um, I flew down to um, to Abuja. On, um, a friend has arranged for me to meet with him. And I, I met with him one-on-one um, -on -one in his, um, in his uh, uh, office. And um, then in Abuja, and he told me about his vision to run Nigeria. And... Um, he would like me to to join and was calling the other Nigerians to give him advice, whatever thing that we would do. That was June 2014. Um, 14. And, I, and I agreed that I would do my uh, best. And when I talked to him, I was sincerely convinced because I asked him question going back to his um, his, uh, his reign as, as, a, as, 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 a, as a military head of state. And, and he gave me credible uh, answers. And, and, and he appeared to me very sincere. Also, and during... The, the, the campaign uh, low, low, low. to uh, Christian, I stayed on the same floor with, with, with him and we, there was this sincerity but what later came out of the governance uh, process for me was a disappointment. I wish I could meet him again and actually sit down and say, you told me something in June um, uh, um, uh, 2014 and then working with you from that time to the point of your election then, then I left what did happen? Where are we where we are today? Um, APC has, in my view, what looks like a second chance, you know, after the eight years of uh, former President Buhari, you know, because the country has elected another uh, 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 president from APC. Now, my question to you is that, do you think that the burden that the new president is carrying, President Bola Amir Tinubu, do you think it's the same body that President Buhari carried in terms of the promises of Nigeria? Or how do you, uh, uh, secondly, rather, secondly, how do you, uh, what, what is your expectation of, of, of uh, President uh, uh, Bola Amir Tinubu, you know, with what had happened in the last eight years of President uh, uh, Buhari? Because both of them are in the same party. 
Well, both of them are the same party, but they are coming under different circumstances. One is that when Buhari came into power, there was so much expectation and goodwill that it was going to be, uh, it was going to do something. Indeed, he could make a change, and people knew him by what who he was in his first outing as a um, uh, as a military head of state, as somebody who, uh, who could not be corrupted, as somebody who could run a corruption-free government, right? So that was the, the situation um, uh, under which uh, he came in. And um, and uh, by and large, the economy was in a better shape. So he come, he came in with public, some kind of public support or expectation that something would change and that is 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 not corrupt, and that um, the economy was better. Now, moving eight years after, the body in Tinubu faces, President Tinubu faces, is different. One, the economy is is in a worse shape. So the eight years of Buhari administration um, worsened the situations of 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 Nigerians, right? So 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 uh, Tinubu body is different. Two. Tinubu doesn't have the privilege of that um, public uh, acceptance that he is a different person. He is above the corruption. Whether rightly or wrongly, wrongly yeah. he's not in the same register when exactly. it comes to public expectation about, about corruption, right? He's not in the same register. It, it's not like Buaru came in the military rule and all, all that. So he's, he's not there. He's, he's carrying the burden of every... Um, politician that we know in Nigeria, mm. and that whether he likes it or not, whether he is or not, that's a different matter. But the point is, he doesn't have that privilege of being seen as above uh, 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 corruption. And then there, there was more controversy about his emergence as 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 a uh, as elected a as a president, the, the president elect. So these are different conditions on, uh, under which it is, uh, is operated. So it, it will test a different form of metal, right? So it's now his duty to turn that around. You don't, we, we can't decide the, the playing field all the time, the circumstances. When it, when it comes in, this is what you inherit, and that is the hand that fate has dealt to you. That is what uh, you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So there is no point complaining about uh, Buhari, there is no point complaining about the, the goodness or the expectation of of of, uh, of Buhari. Now the ball is in his court, and and he he has to do it because he said it was his turn. People keep saying he um, he, he was prepared. He's, he's been a politician, but the the test of everything is the result we are we are seeing, and, and I don't think we have seen any results so far that would justify that accolade being heaped, uh, heaped upon upon him. The, the, the Bible says, if your strength fails you on the day of adversity, it is small. Mm -hmm. I always tell it to people that if your strength fails you on the day of adversity, it was not there. <laughs> right? So, so, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's a simple case. We are not seeing the result. We are not even seeing a clear vision of where the country is going. I don't know who handles their communication or, or, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. or so, I have great friends, they are Bayo, uh, Dela Laki, and on, on others that should be there. There is no, because, because part of governance is casting uh, a vision, yeah, especially under the circumstances he came, the controversial nature of, of the circumstances under which he emerged as the president elect, right? So, what is the, there is no clear vision of where they're taking this country to. It, it, it appears so far to me. It's, it's almost like a knee-jerk reaction. Like, um, okay, fine, they're going to remove um, a subsidy, right? So they are now still there, but was there a plan, laying that plan to say, how are we going to handle the consequences of this, right? Was there a laid up plan to say that the NARA has been uh, depreciating for even be, be before they got into the office? What are we going to do? Eight months... Or more into a governance system is too long for you to uh, still don't have a, uh, a, 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 a plan. So moving along, uh, Prof, the idea uh, has been uh, uh, developed or mentioned that we need to have a serious 
conversation around an elite consensus uh, about the major issues of the day, uh, about political conduct, about uh, uh, the, 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 the benchmarks in, in, in developmental sectors of our economy, uh, in, in the area of, of, of our life as a country. Yeah. So do you, do, do you subscribe to such a notion that the elites of this country, especially the political elites, regardless of political parties, uh, regional or, or religious differences, must all subscribe to this so that, you know, our political uh, conduct and the outcome of, 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 of our politics can become something uh, that would be more uh, uh, noble. What, what do you say, Prof? Yeah, yeah. As a concept, it's, um, yeah, it's a good one. As an abstract con concept of, yeah, so if the elite, the, the um, uh, factions of the different ruling class can agree on basic standard of governance, can agree to establish um, a properly functioning country, can agree to uh, have um, a, a functioning market economy that will raise the uh, productivity of every Nigerian, that will increase the GDP of every Nigerian, that will increase the well-being of every Nigerian, and therefore making it possible for people to accumulate wealth through the market process. So if they could do that, that would lift the country up. And that would, so we all know the rules of the competition and we can go into it and, and, um, yeah, 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 and play and, and let the winner emerge. That is what has been done in other advanced uh, uh, countries also. But that presupposes that the, the ruling elite in Nigeria are serious about developing the country. I mean, it's very clear, people like Claude Ake said it decades ago, that the Nigerian ruling class is not interested in developing the country. They want the chaos and the underdevelopment which allows them to continue their process of primitive accumulation. They, they allow the chaos to go on so they can capture the state and use it as a means of production, as, as, as a way to accumulate wealth. As long as that incentive is there, you know, it would defeat that purpose. It's a noble purpose to have that um, consensus of the, of, of the elite. But the question is, the, the way our politics is now, when politics is the major means of production, is the major means of wealth. If we don't address that, then how are we going to get to the elite consensus? Because it's a lot easier to make money through the state than to set up businesses, run it, and face the risks of losses. Mm. So in, in an economic system, when you have a certain incentive to do that, right, um, it is very difficult. So instead of looking for elite consensus as a starting point, might be if we, the people, decide to elect certain people that will at the minimum enforce the rules and, and, and make Nigeria a society of law and order. When you have a society of law and order and you bring people accountable, that will begin to force the elites to say, what are the rules that, that should govern competition for political power? Because as long as people don't pay a price for embezzling money, as long as people do things with uh, impunity and, and they could get away with it, whether from, from the politician to the churches, to, uh, to the businesses, to even households. So until we address that problem, of course, somebody will say, then this is a chicken and egg problem. How do we do that? If you have an elite, uh, elite consensus. Okay, anyway, you know, so, so you know, still on that, and I, I, I quite uh, see the logic of your argument, but this is, this is, I'll make a comment and then I'll let you have a last word. Because the way I look at it, I mean, if, 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 if the elites don't transform uh, our, our nation, uh, won't they be consumed by the, by, 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 the, by the dialectical responses, you know, uh, we saw a big uh, uh, protest in 2020 uh, in this country. And like I said, this week, people have been taken to the streets. What do you say? Your last word. Yeah, my, my last word again, I come back to the, I have um, kind of freed myself from thinking that the Nigerian ruling class loves Nigerians and Nigeria. So let's come to that fact that these people do not love the people they govern. They don't love the country. And, and, and so to expect anything that they will come to any form of consensus 
that will bring a semblance of love or justice or development to Nigeria is um, uh, is I, I, I think it's 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 like we are we are we are not, we are not being sincere with ourselves. So the issue is that people have been protesting, but the ruling class have not paid the price. So the, the elite consensus that the self-interest will not come out of their own volition, out of their goodwill, out of their God-given heart is not going to come. Because sometimes somebody's enlightened self-interest has to be enforced, put upon them by a superior force. That they now begin to say, it's not only in our enlightened self-interest, it's our, in our common self-interest to do certain things. So until the masses wake up and the politicians pay a price, when they begin to pursue them out of the, the House of Assembly, National Assembly, in their homes, on their streets, in their villages, when that begins to happen and they feel that their lives are threatened, the lives of their family are threatened, their property is, is, is threatened, and, and, and indeed is, is that kind of force that will make them sit up. Because right now, they could go away with their loot and, 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 and live abroad. Or, or whatever. So it, it yes, it's in their self uh, in their self interest, enlightened self interest to govern the country well. As a matter of fact, there'll be more avenues to to make money in a legitimate way. I agree upon that. But history has shown that people often do not come to their uh, knowledge of their self interest, especially when they have the power to exploit, and when they have when they are corrupt and, and absolutely corrupt. Mm. They don't think about their self-interest. So their self-interest actually is defined by how much they can steal, how they will accumulate. Their self-interest, a lot of self-interest is stealing and corruption, not the development of the country. Until those of us who are not part of that system put an enormous pressure, make them pay a price, that is when they, they, uh, uh, they, they, they will listen. But as yeah, long as they are, not, they are not paying a price, Mm. There is this callous insensitivity in the country. People don't care about their neighbor. They don't care about anybody. And we see it all around, even, uh, yeah, yeah, even in the country. There is not this sense that we belong to one nation, that there is, there is a sense of em empathy. No, they don't have it. Their, their enlightened self-interest is to steal, steal, and steal more. And we have to find a way to hold them accountable to put their feet to fire, to serious fire. That is when they will wake up right now. They are in some kind of dogmatic slumber. Mm. They are not awake yet. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, thank, thank you so much uh, uh, for for your insight and uh, for your contributions. And uh, you know, uh, we hope that uh, uh, we will be able to, to to move this beyond conversation uh, and to a point where our country uh, will move forward. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Nimi Wariboko, uh, Professor of Social Ethics. Uh, Boston University. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. All right. God bless you. You know, just like you have said, you know, uh, anyone that is in public office, there is going to be a day that you'll be out of public office. And it is what you have done that will be said when you have gone. And when you are gone, you have no more control. So it's good to do exactly what it is that the people have elected you to do. And that is it uh, for this week on Inside Sources. Uh, we'll be back next week. My name is Laolu Akode. Mm -hmm.